Welcome back to Emotional Mojo. Did you know more than half of adolescents and teens have been bullied online? More than half. Okay. And so that means the chances are way too high that your teen is either being bullied or doing the bullying. And joining us to discuss the growing social media dangers is Forbes Top 10 Social Media Influencer, Kim Garst. Kim, thanks for being here. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. That is a scary number, especially considering how many teens and kids are connected online now. I mean, why is cyberbullying such an issue now? Well, you know, bullying's not new. It's been around forever. It's just, it's giving kids a median that they've never had before. And um, there's kind of, you hate to say there's this pack mentality, but it kind of is mm -hmm. that. You yeah. know, they get wrapped up in, oh, so-and-so is doing this, and I've got to fall in line. Yeah. Even sometimes when they're not that kid. They're not the kid who would normally um, instigate something, but they'll follow. Well, and it's easier to type something out Amen. Yeah. and be mean yes. about it than it is to go to your face and say, I don't like that, whatever, but right. it's easy to just... But that's yeah. dangerous for parents because they may think, not my kid. You know, my kid is sweet and nice mm -hmm. and is always polite to people when online there's that anonymity, you know, of mm -hmm. having a username and a... A profile. I mean, what are we supposed to do? Well, in you know, in real life, you know, just like you said, there's a uh, there's time usually, and now we have immediate access to communication, right? And so they react in the in the moment versus having a mo have having some time. The scary part is that yes, there are 50 percent of children that are being bullied or have bullied uh, someone, um, and there's only seven percent of parents who have an awareness of this. That's a huge disconnect. Yeah, wow. yeah. Huge yeah. disconnect. I think it's it's interesting because I have some clients who don't understand that their their I guess employer or future employers are looking at their social media and right. damaging pictures are popping up and they're not getting jobs. What is really damaging um, on social media for those who are looking for jobs? I think there is a lot of subjectivity to that. Mm -hmm. You know, there is some. Um, you know, it depends on who's looking at mm -hmm. it. Right. But it could be anything from literally a lifestyle uh, choice to you know maybe uh, parties that some would think are over the top. Uh, you know, <laughs> or suggestive clothing. It could be anything that would um, alert somebody to the fact that this might not be the person for the job. Or even, um, you know, I've heard of some master's degrees programs who are literally looking into uh, the applicant's social I've media presences. Too. And it's not just uh, jobs, too, or schools. Mm -hmm. Also, if you're applying for um, insurance or credit, yes. I mean, the first thing people do is I'm going to Google it. And so if we can bring it back for a second to the kids and the parents, because it starts, you know, when you're young. Yes. You say there are five tips that every parent should know about social media. So what are the things that we need to be doing? Well, um, I think the biggest thing, uh, honestly, that we need to really focus in on is um, education and okay. communication. Okay. You know, if we educate the kids, uh, there's security concerns, there's, you know, some other issues too, but the, um, the big things are, you know, c making sure that you're telling your kids and talking to your kids about the dangers of social media mm -hmm. and stranger danger has always been, you know, something you teach your kids. But today, you should literally be, as a parent, be involved in, in making sure that they know that they are not allowed to accept any connection requests that are not known to them. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's big, uh, whether, whether you control that or whether you uh, educate them to do so. Um, and then communicating and letting them know that they can come to you and be a resource because 50% of kids don't tell their parents that they're being bullied. I think, and do you think parents should be friends with their kids? We've always had this argument <laughs> as to whether yeah. friends as in online. Online. You know? Um, I actually have this conversation routinely with yes. people, and I absolutely think you should be friends. Make you it have to, so too. You, yeah. you have to be. You have to be involved. If you don't know what's mm -hmm. going on, you have no, you have to balance their their privacy uh, you know, needs yeah. uh, against their safety. And I think that yeah. the safety has to win out. What about consequences? Because we've done stories where a girl is cyberbullied or a boy and he commits suicide or something happens. And right. now these people are starting to be held accountable. If you commented on it, you contributed to it, mm -hmm. do you think you're, we're gonna see laws changing soon? Um, I have already seen this even in schools where, uh, you know, if you favored a tweet that is not appropriate, then there's, there's um, action there. You know, the school will take action, disciplinary action. Um, you know, you can have you lose your cell phone uh, if the parents pursue it. You know, and go all the go all the way uh, uh, to you know the individual cell phone companies. Uh, you can lose your internet access. There's a lot of things, uh, and of course, depending on how bad it is, you know, if it's um, 
suggestive in any way, then you know there could be legal, real legal consequences. We so. we talked earlier um, today. We did the news story about a mom whose daughter was mm -hmm. cyberbullying. So to mm -hmm. punish her, she posted this picture and made her daughter hold a sign saying what she did, basically publicly shaming her on the internet. Do yes. you think this is the right form of punishment? How do you punish, for lack of a better <laughs> right. word, a child who is a cyberbully? What do you do? Oh, goodness. You know, I wish I had, I knew, I think it's different for every child, mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I wouldn't do that, probably. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, it depends on, I guess it would depend. If you have already taken some steps to try to uh, control it and it didn't work, then the public shaming might be the last resort. But I wouldn't start there. No. Yeah. Well, and I don't know that it's really about punishment as it is, like you said, it's communication and education of yes. what's really happening here and how this is affecting people that you're talking to. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's just such a huge problem. And my biggest concern, honestly, is the disconnect between what's really happening and the parents' awareness of what's really happening. Yeah. Got to be more it's, informed. It's huge. All right. Thank you so much, You're Ken, welcome. for your advice. We're going to have you stick around. We're going to play a game called Yes, No. Okay. And I'd love to get your opinion, especially on this first one. Okay, so Target getting some criticism for a mistake on its website. Take a look at this. An online customer spotted a maternity model donning the Morona women's plus size short sleeve v-neck maxi dress on the website. Well, the problem is it spread like wildfire after that. Target has removed the page from the website, but not before dozens of people complained on Twitter saying it was disturbing and fat phobic. Basically, they're saying, you're telling us that either pregnant women are fat or fat people look pregnant. Are you guys offended by this mistake on Target's website? Yeah, I am. Yes? Yeah, I am. Well, I, I mean, I think it was just insensitive. I mean, just plain insensitive. I don't know. Jada, I'm not offended. So. I'm not, because the reality is we're looking at size, and if a pregnant woman can fit into that size, and a full-figure woman can fit into that size, hmm. then it's the size. It's hmm. not necessarily sending a message. Okay. I would agree. Yeah. I would agree. And, you know, for those who are offended, I, you know, from a brand standpoint, I would make an apology and say it was never intended to be offensive. Uh, offensive. I was going to say too, how do you do damage control? I mean, a website now is such a huge component of a business. It's a big yeah. deal. Mm -hmm. Their social media sites, their website. How should Target do damage control? Do they need to for this um, mistake? If, uh, yeah, I, if, if there are people that are offended, and there are, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, obviously, because it wouldn't be, we wouldn't be talking about yeah. it if there weren't people offended by it. So literally, I would just make a, a formal apology and uh, you know That's let up. people know that it, That's it, it. Yeah. you know people don't mind if you make a mistake they just mind if you don't uh, own, it. own it yeah. Yeah. all right tennis star maria sharapova got a strange request from a fan recently she posted this on her twitter page someone sent her their own iphone asking her to take a selfie on it and give it back and then they wanted her autograph as well kind of creative maybe less intrusive than trying to snap a picture with her now people are voting as to whether she should fulfill the fan's request. Should she do it? Yes or no? Uh, interesting. I say go for it. I say go for it. I say yes too. I say yeah. yes for creativity. It's a little yeah. weird, a little weird, but it's amazing what um, social media has done now. We are yeah. like a direct line to celebrities through yeah, every Twitter and Instagram and all of that stuff. Absolutely. I mean, you know, before, I mean, it does, on so many levels, just people that you never would have had an Ever. opportunity to meet in the course of day-to-day -day yeah. life. You can I chat know. with them. You it's can amazing. chat with them. It's, it's amazing. It's Kim, thank huge. you so much for thank being you. with us. We appreciate sure. it. Don't go anywhere, you guys. We've got a lot more coming up on Emotional Mojo. Two sisters separated in childhood have now reunited thanks to Facebook. All right, we're going to give the details of this amazing story when we return. Don't go anywhere.